We started off today talking about limits. So if I have a function that looks like this, the limit as x goes to 1 of my function does not exist. That's because my function does not approach one single number as x approaches the number 1. However, I do have a limit from the left and a limit from the right. My limit as x goes to 1 from the left of f of x is going to be 1, and my limit as x goes to 1 from the right of f of x is going to be 2. Now notice it doesn't matter what the value of the function is at x equals 1. It only matters what it approaches. There's a couple different ways we saw for a function to not have a limit. Here's one. This function, when I come here to x equals 1, approaches different numbers from different sides. So this is a way that the limit does not exist. Another way is if we have a function that goes off to positive or negative infinity. At this point, say at 10, this function's limit does not exist. But what we can write is that the limit as x goes to 10 from the left is equal to infinity, and the limit as x goes to 10 from the right is equal to minus infinity. Now there's a technical point here. These limits don't exist, but we can describe what goes on with them. The thing that's going on is that from the left, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and from the right, it's getting more and more and more strongly negative. Another weird way that a limit might not exist is if we have a function that just bounces around too much. We saw this with the sine of 1 over x. It's a function that wiggles more and more and more and more and more the closer you get to 0. We also talked about calculating functions. Now if your function is made up of a rational function or functions that are added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided as long as the denominator is not equal to 0, or that are raised to some power, or where you take a root as long as you don't have a negative number to an even root, then you can more or less just plug in to find the limit. Here's an example. The limit as x goes to 1 of 2x squared plus 35 over x plus 3 to the 1 half plus x squared plus 2 to the fifth. Now this is a function that's made up of rational functions that are added, subtracted, multiplied, divide, powers, as long as the thing, as long as where I'm looking for the limit, my function is defined, and it is, I can just plug in. I can say, well, the limit of this is 2 times 1 squared plus 35 divided by 1 plus 4. And now I take that limit and raise it to the 1 half. And the limit inside here is just 1 squared plus 2. And I raise that to the fifth. And I get whatever this is, 37 fifths square root plus 3 to the power 5. Now I could not have done this if I were going x to the minus 3, because in that case the function wouldn't be defined and I would need something else to do to find the limit. The limit very well might exist, but I would have to do something else to find it. The last thing we learned about finding limits is that it's okay to simplify. So if I have some function that looks like x plus 1, x minus 1, over x minus 1, well, this has a hole at x equals 1, right? Because I can't plug x equals 1 into here. But we can see that whenever x is not equal to 1, f of x is the same as just 
x plus 1 because these guys will cancel. They don't cancel if x is equal to 1, but everywhere else they go away. So even though f of 1 does not exist, the limit as x goes to 1 of f of x does exist, and it's equal to the limit as x goes to 1 of x plus 1, this simplified function, and that's just 2.